been? Hello, all you hardcore boxing fans out there. How are you doing? It's Big P here. Yeah? You know, don't you? You know, the voice of hardcore boxing. Today, we've got a special edition of Porky's Corner. We've got the return of the voice of pay-per-view, Dale Nichols from the Midlands. How are you doing, Dale? Is it Canuck you're from? Just head to Canuck, a little place called Pelsel. Go on, Dale. Will you live with your little honey? <laughs> That's it, yeah. And uh, I'm a little boy. What's your dog called? <laughs> Cody. Cody. Go on, Cody, lad. Uh, there's only one place to start. It's Billy Joe Saunders against Saul Alvarez, or Canelo, as we call him, the ginger Mexican. What do you think to it all, Dale? Go on, away you go. You've got your moment. Um, well, firstly, um, Saunders quit. There doesn't seem to be any sign that he was asking to be pulled out in the corner, but whatever has happened in that corner, they've managed to get him out of the fight. He was one of the first to criticise Daniel Dubois back at the, in the back end of last year. Um, there's videos circulating today that said that he would rather be carried out with a ring. Well, that didn't seem to happen last night, did it? No. Um, I thought that Saunders won two rounds of the fight. Um, on initial viewing, I gave him three. I've watched it back. I now give him two rounds. I thought Canelo was comfortably up on the cards. So this narrative of the robbery or the fix was in, it's a load of nonsense. Canelo was comfortably winning the fight. He was coming on strong. And even without the busted eye socket or whatever, I think Canelo was going to force a stoppage by some way anyway. He was coming on strong. Billy Joe Saunders went into that fight with an arrogant mindset for me. He's been pumped up by everybody around him that you're this fantastic technician, you're this skillful master masterclass. You can go in there, you can pot shot your way to victory. He went in there with no game plan, Porky. He went in there thinking that he could just box on the back foot with a, with a bigger ring and he could just pick off Canelo without any sort of game. Callum Smith went in there at the back end of last year with no game plan. Billy Joe Saunders went in there last night with no game plan. And it's told. And he's gone. He's come out of there absolutely battered. And it really wouldn't surprise me at all now. We all know that he's not the most dedicated in the world. We might not see Billy Joe Saunders again. He'll be a year out at ring with that injury, won't he? Possibly. Um, I mean, I know Dubois is coming back. He's scheduled in in June, is he? Um, so that will have been nine months, wasn't it? Well, maybe eight, eight and a half months by that time. So you're looking at at least, at least eight to ten months. Uh, do you feel, Dale, that Billy Joe had never been in a firefight before? And the first, this is the first time we've ever really seen him hit, isn't it, really, in his whole career, you know, in, in trouble. Do you feel that he... he he had like a mental breakdown that it's the first time he's been in trouble in his career and that that's why the fight was stopped by Mark, by Mark Tibbs pulled him out. I think you hit the nail on the head there. If you look at, if you look at his best wins, we, we would we'd point to three. We'd say Eubank Jr., mm. which at the time was a British-level fight and that was a life and death and he hung on for dear life in that 12th round. Andy Lee, again a life and death where a few people bar the knockdowns thought that Andy Lee won more rounds. Saunders probably only got the nod because of the... Well. And that was some years ago now. And obviously David Lemieux, who, in all fairness, he did box well against. But who's David Lemieux's best win? That was so cool. if you... He's he, won it. Exactly. He's not fought anyone with a pulse for four years. He, he dragged Martin Murray out, out the cemetery at the back end of last year. Um, and who, who was it that he fought before that? Someone on a YouTuber's undercard 12 months before? It's not the perfect preparation going in against, by far and away, the best fighter on the planet. Do you feel that uh, that's it for him now, then? Um, the way that Billy Joe's mindset is, he will probably think that he'd be gifting you bank a payday. Um, they both need each other, in my opinion, but clearly he's obviously earned his millions now, hasn't he, Saunders, from this fight. Will, will he will he risk going into a fight against Eubank in a rematch? Because that's the only realistic fight for him now, in my opinion, yeah. that makes any sort of sense. I can't see I can't see it in the immediate future. So in my personal opinion, I, 
I think with his discipline, that could be that could be curtains for Billy Joe. Do you feel that if he did fight Eubank in a year from now, that Eubank could take care of him? Um, I mean, you'd always favour Billy Joe to beat Eubank just because he is the be- the all round, you know, the better rounded fighter. But you never know how fighters can come back from an injury like this. We still we still yet to see what Dubois. He's going to come back like I know he's fighting an absolute tomato can, but when he steps up through the levels, we'll really see what what it's done to him mentally. And the only other example we've got to hand in recent times is Kel Brook, and we all know that he was pretty much finished. Yeah, he came back and fought Spence, but the you know the, the same injury occurred again. He's not been a shadow of himself since then either. So it's difficult to say at this point, Porky. But I would have to go along with I just don't see Saunders fighting again. Yeah, uh, it's the first time he's ever really been in trouble in ring, isn't it? Do you think, do you think it, we could say that he's been very carefully matched up or he's not really fought the top? The, he's not really been in a fight where people have said you're an underdog. He's always been a favourite whenever he's fought, hasn't he? I admire the way that he went through, you know, he fought John Ryder, he fought Spike, he fought Eubank. They were all undefeated guys and they were all credible guys at the time. Um, to get to European level, Nick Blackwell. Um, was it was was it um, yeah Nick Blackwell yeah good 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 call um and was it Blanda Murray for at you for the European title at the time as well a credible opponent so to get to that point in his career he really did take the hard way um and he went the traditional route which we all love to say yeah, British yeah. Commonwealth European to give him credit he for went that. and then you know granted he fought a paper champion in Andy Lee but he won the fight. He did win the fight. He just won it for me. Um, but he never kicked on from there, did he? I think the he wheels fell on. off after he won it. I don't know what, what happened behind the scenes. I don't know whether, you know, he'd, he'd earned so much money that the motivation had gone. He was getting himself out of shape in between fights. He was getting into trouble in his personal life. Yeah. Um, you know, bored, bored constantly fining him. He's been suspended. He had his licence suspended. <sighs> Would we say it was a wasted talent? Well, you know, at the end of the day, he's a British Commonwealth European and a two-weight world champion. So if you look at that, no, he hasn't wasted his talent, but he hasn't got that signature win either, has he? No. No, he hasn't. He's, he... I mean, I don't like to refer back to this because people give me a bit of stick at this, but if you look at Carl Frotcher's career, when you know when you get it, right, there's two things you, you, you do when you get dropped or you get hurt in a fight. First time I saw Carl Froch uh, take blows were against uh, real blow against Pascal. They proper went at each other like cat and dog. And 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 I thought he can he's a firefighter. You put fires out, don't you? And I think Billy, he was like a firefighter yesterday. He had all gear on and that, but. If he would have been going up the, the tower at 9-11 when that were on fire, he'd be, I think he'd have been hanging around bottom of the stairs and letting other people go up, you know, that kind of thing. I think when he got here, and this is harsh, and people can say, Porky, you hate, you know, Billy Joe, look. Nobody's going to come out and say this, what I'm going to say now, nobody. Not, not M- IFL, not people who are travellers, right? You won't get Peter Fury coming out saying this. You won't get other travellers coming out and saying this, but I'm going to tell you now, Billy Joe Saunders, Coogan won't say it, nobody will say this, because he's MTK in it, but I'm telling you, he's an on-top fighter like Mike Tyson. They're all right while they're dishing it out. Once they get some, and he got some, didn't he, last night? Once they get some, they turn away. Now, I firmly believe that he didn't like the situation. I think quit's a hard word to, to, to say when you... When you've got people in corner saying, I'm gonna, I want to save you for another day and all this, and he's a box and he has to be given respect. But he'd never been in a firefight, had he? He'd never been in one. He'd always just got just done enough to get by. He was in a firefight and he thought, you know what? It's red hot here in this fire and I'm going home. If he were a firefighter, he wouldn't have saved anybody. He, he turned away. And he'll have to live with that now. Now, it's going to be interesting to see what the industry thinks about this, because MTK have got a bit of a stranglehold on a lot of people now, media, they're even doing amateur clubs all over the place. 
They've got a lot of boxers, trainers, managers. Everybody wants to pal them up. But let's have it right. We all saw what we saw, didn't we? But is there going to be any Sunday sermons or Monday mass interviews this week on all the IFL, boxing social, behind the gloves, seconds out? All these people, are they all going to come out and call it like they did when Debar got beat? I don't think they're going to do because I'm seeing note at the moment. Are you? Absolutely nothing at all. Um, they're all... There's a couple... They're all batting hatches down, aren't they? There was plenty. There was plenty sticking the boot in. You know, Johnny Nelson was one of the first on the scene. Um, Tony Bellew was one that was on the scene. Matthew Macklin was on the scene. Dave Allen was on the scene. They were. They were all. They were all feasting around the carcass at the time. But when it comes to you know what you would call one of their own now, none of them Island. dare say a word. Island. None of them dare say a word. You've got. You've got Tony Bellew. Tony Bellew who. who when Canelo absolutely schooled Callum Smith at the back end of last year, was was suggesting that Canelo was roided up to the hills and and he, and, and without any evidence whatsoever, he was saying um, this is unnatural. He'll be going around knocking out heavyweights soon just because his pal had got beat by Canelo. But when Canelo, when Dillian White failed a drugs test and he he went after a reporter that reported a failed drugs test, that was a fact. Dylan White filed a drugs test and Tony Bellew called for that reporter to be sacked for reporting the truth. But Tony Bellew can go on social media and accuse Canelo for taking drugs because he batted Callum Smith without any evidence. Mm. But all these people now have all zipped up their mouths and they've got nothing to say for themselves now. And let's see the exposure that Coogan gives to this. Now, we both know what happened the last time we someone put it to Coogan when it, he was putting out content for quitting. Yeah, and he didn't he didn't take kindly to the criticism that people were putting on IFL. Well, what was that yesterday? That were a quit, wasn't it? That were a quit because he should have been saying to Corner, "No, I'm a warrior. I'm going to fight to death." Let me just play this little video that somebody sent me. Right, it's all right being ex. He saw it being experts uh, after the field. Uh, Texas coming in, he wanted to come on here. He saw it being experts after the fact or after the the, the horses bolted. Like, you know, get carried out of the ring, brother. Get carried out of the ring. You know, it's it's, it's not all give knocking people on conchers and, and then you, your eye goes and and then you want to get out. You know, I've got all the time in the world for, for Triple D and uh, he can come again, but it's going to take a long, 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 long road back from that. Yeah, uh, Billy Joe, obviously, he said what he said in that interview. I'll not put the rest of it on. He mm. said he'd get carried out and he's a roadman killer and all this. Look, we didn't see that, did we? And the reason we didn't see it is because Billy Joe's been at the top of the mountain and he's been coming down it now for, for, for maybe three years. After he beat Andy Lee, he's been coming down the mountain. All right, he got there. Well done, area title, English, British, Commonwealth, European, and well, he won all them belts, didn't he? Right, he's gone through all the levels. Uh, I'm not sure if he won English. I think he's won every belt, hasn't he, more or less. But he got to promised land, but he got there too late. Now, where, where it all went wrong for him, in my opinion, he jumped up from middleweight because there were no discipline. And then he were having long lapses in between fights. And I think all that has done him in. I think it, I, I don't think we're ever going to see the best of him, really. What we could have seen, you know, this technician, this surgeon. We were technician, we were surgeon, we were heart, heart of a lion. Because it, it, I mean, it were heart of a breadcrumb job, wasn't it? The heart of a breadcrumb when you quit like that. Gotta... Um, it was. And what one of the other things that I actually think might, persuade Billy Joe to call it a day is I actually think that he might well be struggling for a promoter and I know this might sound a little bit silly but Hearn, Hearn don't want nothing to do with him no, really no. he doesn't not, he doesn't he doesn't he's, he's not an A-side fighter back in the UK he won't he won't sell a ticket when crowds come back in oh. he was there as an opponent last night it shows how much Hearn thinks of him with the, all, all the rumours around the purse all week it was just the Canelo show and Eddie was up his hula hoop, as you'd like to say. Yeah. Didn't give a toss about Billy Joe. So Billy Joe won't be fighting under the matchroom banner again, I don't think. Will, will he go back to Frank? Uh, you know what I mean? And, th and this is all part of the reason why I think it might well be 
might well be uh, the end of the end of the road for Billy Joe. Um, but as we're on to Eddie Hills, uh, a few a few things I have sent you this week. This is a man that can do no wrong. Um, over the past 12 months, we've had Eddie Hearn, DJ set ring walks on Radio 1. We've had an appearance on A League of Their Own. We've had an appearance on Soccer AM. We've got a, bo- a podcast on BBC, No Passion, No Point. Um, we've had a book, Relentless, the Sunday Times bestseller, but there's no evidence of that either. And recently now, we've also got hashtag those who dare join Eddie Hearn, group managing director of Matchroom Sport. And he'll be giving a speech um, for Vodafone Business UK in the coming days. And an average of uh, 18 videos, 18 interviews, averaging between five minutes and an hour per day on 18 platforms. Correct. And uh, obviously, we all know about his uh, stellar amateur record as well. 4 and 0 Iceman from Billy Ricky. Three by way off. Uh, you were waiting for ad lib there, weren't you, Dale? <laughs> uh, actually, it were two skills bouts, but we've only been able to dig one guy up. And then they didn't talk about the fight much, did they? So, look, Eddie, Eddie likes a bit of self promotion. I mean, look at Tyson Fury lapping it up in the stadium. He can't resist an opportunity to spread his wings, can he? He has not had a fight in 15 months. Big fighting man that don't fight. So. I don't know where Billy Joe goes from here, though, Dale, at the moment. Uh, I think it's wasted talent. But can we say that, though? He's a millionaire. He's won all, He's won, gone through all levels. But I always think that the glasses are full with Billy, you know, for the talent that he's got. And I think it's a shame. But once he started getting clipped in there, he didn't, I don't know, he didn't like it, did he? What do you think to Chris Mannix? What, what, what fight were you watching? The scorecard's embarrassing. I mean, um, I wouldn't be the first to criticise Carl Frotch's scorecards, but even he had Canelo two rounds up. Yeah. So, what? 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 was Chris Mannix on the matchroom payroll or something? I had it uh, six rounds to two, and Billy squeaked his rounds, didn't he? Canelo won his big, but Billy squeaked them. He, do you think Billy just turned up to just to do enough to get his paycheck? And do you think? Possibly. I mean, like I said at the start, I don't think he went in there with any sort of game plan at all. And a lot of it was probably what people have been pumping him up with for years on end. I mean, the embarrassment of Michael Buffer the other day saying that he's considered one of the most slicksters in the game. I mean, that is just an absolute joke. You've got pain for pain greats like Lomachenko, um, even Josh Taylor from the UK. You've got uh, Nao Inoue. You've got Teofimo Lopez. These are what, you know, Terence Crawford, these are slicksters, Porky. Not Billy Joe Saunders, who's not even been anywhere near a Gosh, ring magazine. Taylor. You know what I mean? They're not even any, anywhere near a ring magazine ratings. And to this day, his best win is still Andy Lee. How, how does that define a slickster? His best wins, Andy Lee, a career like middle. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, we can't rip Billy too much, though, because he's got the balls to get in there. But I just think that he's not done himself justice. All that about stronger, faster, quicker than a speeding bullet and plodding around uh, with his team and that and nutrition guys and all that. I mean, where were this nutrition guy, where, 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 this Greg Marriott guy, all these strength and conditioning, all these people that he's got in his team? What, where, where, Where's all these? What, what, what's all this added to him? Is there too many people hanging out at back of Billy Joe? Should it just be him and Mark Tibbs and forget all the rest of them? Because that's how I look at it. I mean, why does he need all them people around him feeding off him? I mean, these same people will be telling him that he, he, he should come back and fight again. This this is what you're up against. There's just too many tag, taggers along, isn't there? Billy too many Joe people should, tagging along. He can fight again now after that. Kel Brook shouldn't fight again, but they will because they have people in their ear rolling up their assholes. That's what happens. The hula hoopers, they're called. If you check, go on my members area and watch the hula hoopers video. And, and like I said, we keep sending these guys. Kel Brook went over there, didn't he, with strength and conditioning team. What happened to him against Crawford? What happened to Billy Joe over there? Our, our British fighters... Just not good enough. 
I, there's a few exceptions. I mean, to give him credit, Tyson Fury's been one of them that that does seem to you know book the trend. They go over there, they don't get folded and folded in half. Amir Khan back in the day went over there and had some massive wins against bona fide champions. Um, and even Frotch as well against obviously Jermaine Taylor being the standout one. Um, but there's not many fighters that go over to America, crack it, get a big win and come home. It just does not happen. Do you feel that certain people in boxing like to shoot their mouths off and when they get hit and they get some, and like I've just said to you, he got some last night, Billy, didn't he? He must have thought, you know what, I don't like this. Do you think after he started softening him up a bit, Canelo, do you think Billy were looking for a way out after round six? Yeah. Um, yeah, I think so. I mean, a lot of it might have come down to the fact that it was probably gassing as well. It was probably gassing, and and that that's the one thing that usually does sort of trigger a quit. I spoke to a pal of mine about an hour ago, and I said to him, how, how do you feel after watching it? He said, I've watched it three times. Because he don't like Billy, and he said he thought that he'd be buzzing that Billy got, it ended like, like it did for Billy. But he said to me, he said, he just feels that it's, like I've said, basically, wasted talent, in it? It's, you know, could you imagine Frotch with some of the skills that Billy's got and the toughness that he had? And, you know, and your Clinton Woods, them guys that spilled the guts in there and didn't quit and things like that. Do you, do you, but do you think this generation that we've got now, they've had it too easy and and the money's come too too good for them and they just, they just look for a way out? There's plenty of fighters who've quit and it's gone under the radar over the years. There's been plenty. I mean... One of the most high-profile ones is the Joshua against Ruiz. And again, that come down to a gas tank. George Groves against Callum Smith, again, come down to a gas tank. Mm. Once, once they've got nothing left in there, there's only so many times you can go to the well. Groves, in all honesty, he'd probably earn his stripes. You can only go to the well so many times. But Billy had never been to the well before, though, had he? The first time he had to go to the well, it was all over. 31st fight, wasn't it? It's 31st fight. I'm disappointed because I think that if he'd have looked after his son a bit better, stayed at one. And even Khan, even Khan's quitting his career, didn't he? He quit against Crawford. Yeah. But if Billy Joe had looked after himself a bit better, stayed at 160 pounds and been more active in the ring instead of long layoffs. I, I feel that he could have given Canelo nightmares at 160 pounds. I really, really do. But I just think that moving up to 168, he was never going to stop Canelo. Kovalev couldn't budge him or Golovkin. So what were Billy going to do with them feather, feather duster punchers? You know, Billy's a feather duster man at that level, isn't he? We, we know that. But his skills get him through, don't they? But I just feel sad, I think. I feel. I feel for him a little bit, but he's brought a lot on it on himself. He's rubbed a lot of people up the wrong way, hasn't he? But what I want to see now is some transparency from these YouTubers and media people. I want to see transparency. That's what I want to see. I don't want to hear, hear that, oh, he needed pulling out and all that. I don't want to hear that. I want to hear about him being a roadman killer and a warrior and a gypsy. I want to hear all that. Well, where was that on the night? And are all these people who were who were hanging out at back of MTK and hanging out at back of Billy Joe? Are these people going to come out and call it straight, or are these people going to have a look at themselves? These people around him, the people that he's got around him, need to have a look at themselves and say, "Do you know what? Are we doing the right thing? Knocking about with Billy Joe, going out doing what we want? Is he disciplined? He needs to have a long hard look at himself because he's a boxing historian, Billy." And I think what he'll do, I think when he's had his operation and, and, and everybody stopped talking about him and he's put a couple of stone on, he'll have a look at mirror himself and he'll think, do you know what? I hate myself. Because he's not give his he's not giving himself the right opportunities to, to perform at his best level. For example, you know your Clinton Woodsers, people like that, Frotchers, they're in bed at nine o'clock at night and then they're up next day for the runs. Every single day, it's mundane, day in, day out. They can't see the friends. Or the friends come around to see them and they say, look, I've got to go to bed or I've got to do a training session. They don't just say it's one session. 
has he give his son the right opportunity? And I don't think he has. And he's been jumping around with trainers and that. And I think he went back to Tibbs, Mark Tibbs and whatnot. But I think it would I think it were all over for him. I think it were over for him after the Lemieux fight. I think he got carried away with himself and it just all went downhill. What do you think? Um I think the word you're looking for is consistency with the YouTubers. That's what we're looking for. Oh, you we, mean the, we, the YouTubers? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we're looking for consistency there. Um, there's always a, a saying that sort of goes around in boxing, and that's you'll find out who your friends really are when you lose. Mm. And those that will stick around now, Billy Joe will find out who really does give a shit about him. Yeah, they'll, they will stick around him now. Should we say to him, Bill, retire? Shouldn't be saying, look, you still got it and you're just a bad injury and you're a winning fight and all that crap. People are chatting crap. I mean, what? who on earth had it level or Billy Joe up after eighth round? What planet are these people on? Are they hula hooping him? It was, there's, there's, not a, there's no way Billy Joe won five rounds of that fight last What's night. he said, Fearon? What's Fearon said? Malcolm X? What's he, what's he spouting? Got no idea yet. Have a good got idea. No idea. He won't be telling the truth, will he? Um, have a look what he's... One of the people you have mentioned, um, and that's Tyson Fury, um, he couldn't keep out the line. Like all week, anyone would have thought that it was him that was fighting and not Billy Joe. He comes out with all this rubbish constantly of money means nothing to me and I don't want the fame or the glory. He cannot keep his face off the camera. Greediest man in boxing. After Hills. He's greediest man in boxing. No, he's greedier than Eddie Hills. Trust me, they're on a par, mate. Trust me. But uh, what's he said, Tyson Fury? Has he said he quit? No, he wouldn't have said that, will he? Well, he was absolutely certain that Billy Joe was going to win, wasn't he? He was absolutely yeah. certain. The mates, aren't they? They're going to say that, aren't they? Look, none of them knew it. None of them really thought that he'd win. None of them. But they've got to say that. But what? That's what I think. None of them thought he'd win. I, I know in my heart what when I see people saying stuff, and I'll pull a few people on my WhatsApp. I won't mention the name. I say, What are you coming out with? Where's my pal? Is me oh, he's my pal's whatever fighter. And look, we have to tell it straight, right? People knew in the hearts what was going to happen. I had Canelo to win on points and Billy staying out of range, and but he got stopped. Well, he didn't get stopped, he quit, didn't he? Stops when you're on floor or you can take an account. When you're on your stool, you've gone back to your corner. You know, all right, aren't you? You've gone back to your corner, you've sat down, they've pulled him out. Now, we've seen a lot worse at eye injuries than that, and people carrying on, haven't we? I mean, look at uh, Chris Eubank being one of my people. Eubank against Carl Thompson. Chris Eubank against Nigel Bell. Ben, they went at it like cat and dog. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So, we've seen a lot worse than that. And it, it all points to him quitting, but like I've just said to you there, nobody's going to come out and say it because they're all frightened to lose a bit of access. And this is where this is the problem in the sport of boxing. And then who do come out and say it, who will, who will feel pressured to do it to save a bit of face, they'll be cut off. They'll 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 fall out with Billy because Billy's quite spiteful and he is a bit of a bully. We all know that, don't we? So. But you're going, to, you're going to see now, you're going to see some changes. But it is what it isn't. But let's see Coogan Cassius come out and then start doing these sermons with everybody for next week. I want to see them all come out. Caldwell, Tony Bellew, Shane McGuigan, uh, Ben Davidson. What's he going to say? He loves a good sermon, doesn't he? I want to see all these come out and call it like they've seen it. They like to call fights on a Sunday and Monday. Well, let's see them do it. But you're not going to see that, mate, because they're going to be worried about getting pulled at a show. Whereas me, I don't care. But these people, they still want to work with people. And Ben Coldwell and McGuigan and uh, Shane McGuigan and uh, or Ben Davidson, they'll all want to work with him again. They'll, sorry, they'll all want to work with Billy at some point in the career. So they'll not come out and say it as it is out of fear, fear of being out of the circle. Or fear of not being able to work with that person, and this is like I said, this is what's wrong. And but we're going to watch. You know, we we've called it, and no doubt uh, Andy Patterson and, and and Steve Wellins, Ozzy Smith, all them Smido, they'll all call it, won't they? And say it, but 
Who else will? Will Michelle Joy Phelps come out and say what she said about Daniel Dubois? Will she say the same about Billy? You don't know, do you? I don't. So on the flip side, then, um, talking about Canelo, let's just assume that he's going to fight Caleb Plant in September for the IBF. We'd expect him to win that fight, but it's a, it's a much tougher fight, in my opinion, than Callum Smith and Billy Joe Saunders. But I think if he does get through that fight, which I think he will, what do you think he'll be next for him then after he's cleaned up at 168? Do you think do you think he'll risk going up to 175 and fighting some of those guys up there? Or do you think that they'll just milk him up as the undisputed at 168? I think if he goes to 175, he's got to fight B to B, hasn't he? <sighs> I mean, that's just a monster fight, isn't it? That really is a monster fight. I think he's fighting boxing at the moment after Joshua Fury. The it's two. a massive fight. I mean, anything with Canelo's name on it, it's a massive fight anyway. Yeah, they, they've got to go after him. They've got to go after him, beat to beat when he's there to be beat. Callum Johnson put him on his arse, didn't he? So. So, Fury, Joshua, we were promised that this week, this was going to be it. The, the big announcement. I promise you all, Hills was saying, I promise you all, it's going to be done by the end of the week and you'll get an announcement. 22nd of June last year, or the 21st of June, Sky Sports put an article out. Two fight deal agreed, contract agreed. We're on the 9th of May, 2021, nearly a year later, and still no announcement. Yeah, uh, it's 324 days since that. So we've had 324 days of Tyson Fury bouncing about, saying he's fighting Joshua and self-promoting himself. We've had 324 days of Eddie Earn doing it. And we haven't had that many days of Joshua saying it's going to happen because I think he's a bit of a realist. Uh, and I just think that what's happened is they told a lie because they know it won't going to happen in, within, within 12 months. They told a lie and they had to keep it going. That's what I think. Instead of shutting the lie down and saying, look, we thought it were on, but there's problems, but it will happen one day. They've continued with the lie because they're narcissistic, aren't they? So I think. Kept the lie going. Um, I've said all along that I it just doesn't feel right to me. It doesn't feel like the fight's going to happen. I know it's a massive fight and these things do take time to get across the line, but Hills Hills has never had trouble in the past. I mean, I know Joshua Joshua Parker and Joshua Klitschko sort of did drag on, but they didn't drag on for this length of time. Hills. I don't know what's going on behind the scenes. I, d- I don't know what is going on behind the scenes, but all that jumps out to me is Fury's in a world of legal trouble. Yeah, massive. Look, I called it, didn't I, last February? Didn't I? You remember, don't you? I called it and said, look, he ain't going to fight Joshua until he deals with this wilder thing because as soon as they try and do something, they'll, they'll set lawyers on him. They've already scared the Caballel Fury fight off December 5th, didn't they? When have you ever known Bricktop back down when he announces a show? Didn't he be back down, didn't he? He didn't put the Tyson Fury versus Caballel on. And I think that, yeah, I think Tyson Fury is knee-deep in it, in it at the moment uh, with, with legal problems. That's why it's not happening. They're not telling its full story. It's all right, Eddie Earn saying, I'm the only one trying. Look, all he does is talk. Look, Eddie Earn would be talking anyway. He's always talking to somebody, and he? Every single day he likes to be interviewed. So he's only doing what he normally does every day. He's making out that he's working his balls off. Look, the man's never done a day's work in his life, strutting about, you know, surrounded by young lads all day, strutting about, thinking he, thinking he's a boy Look, never had an hard day's work in his life. Let's see him in cabbage fields at Lindon Prison in winter, cutting them cabbage, back-breaking work, do that every day for months. Not strutting about in limousines and private jets. That's not work, little Lord Fontoroy. But... Uh, I don't think it happens at all, me, Joshua Fury. I think it's just nonsense. I think I've, I've, if, if, I don't even know why we're getting airtime now because people are just switching off from it. The public are fed up, aren't we? We had, we had it with Wilder, though, didn't we? Wilder. One, didn't they fly Wilder over for Klitschko, Joshua? And they said he's next. He's fighting the winner. Well, that were Four years ago? ago. 49 months ago, that was. 49 months, Eddie. What's that, 1,400 and 
40 odd days or something, 50 odd days, something like that. That never happened, did it? Wilder against Fu Wilder Joshua didn't happen. Tyson Fury had to go deal with him. So I don't think Eddie Hills wants the fight. You're talking a good game, but I always think the opposite of what he says. And I think you might be halfway there, Dale. One of the people I kind of want to stick it to as well. Dillian White. Yeah. The car. So we've got I mean what what is he going on about? We've had all sorts I mean, is he wrong in the head? We've had Fury's not the WBC undisputed champion, so he can't fight Joshua until he's beat me. What? And then this week, um, I mean, he said that he had Andy Ruiz beating Chris Ariola by split decision. How can you have someone winning by split decision? How is that possible? And then he also decided to take to Sky Sports to say that Andy Ruiz, let, let me find the quote, um, Andy Ruiz, he's a waste man. He's a joker, regarded Andy Ruiz. Andy Ruiz took the fight that Dillian White turned down. I know. And then knocked Joshua out. Something Dylan White couldn't do and then went 12 rounds in minute rematch. What about Dylan White calling out Chris Ariola? I mean, Chris Ariola lost to Stavern, was it eight years ago? Lost to Wilder, was it five years ago? What what is this? Are there, is Sky really going to push this on pay per view? They put Malcolm Tanning with Dylan White, Lucas Brown, Povetkin twice, Marius Vac. I mean, he Dave loves, Allen. Dave Allen. The, the, he, he loves uh, easy wins, Dylan White. I want to see Dylan White go in a fight where he's not the favourite. That's what I want to see. I want to see people test themselves. I'm glad Billy Joe tested himself, but he could have done it a bit better if he'd have fought at 160 and he'd have looked after himself a bit better and... I mean, people keep saying MTK have done a great job for him, for him, blah, 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 but have they? He's not been active, has he? Well, Michael Hunter's pulled out of the uh, the Ergovic fight, hasn't he? So, perfect opponent for Dillian White. You're not calling him out, Ergovic or uh, Hunter. He wants knockovers. He's piling cash up, in he? He's looking for his seventh pay-per-view against Chris Ariola. I mean, how bad's that? And Parker and Chisora are obviously going to have a rematch as well. Oh, the Stinkinator against War Chisora. It gets worse, Dale, doesn't it? 11 losses, Chisora. Is that pay-per-view, Parker and him rematch? It's going to be, isn't it? They can't put the first fight on pay-per-view and not put the rematch on pay-per-view. And yeah. that were a shocking fight as well. Yeah. That were a shocking fight. They'll well, say because it was a close fight, it was a great fight, it really weren't. Yeah, what do you think to Steffi Ball's tweets? First sign of madness, isn't he? He's talking to himself, isn't he? On social media. One minute he comes out on Sky Sports and says, I've been running Terry Harper's account for over for the last couple of years. And then he's then she's putting tweets out that were quite vile for her because she's not like that, you know. And then he's coming out next day tweeting and, and saying he's laughing at all clowns or something because uh, people thinking he's tweeted on her thing. Well, why don't she come out and do a video and admit it then and say it were her? Yeah, it were me. And I just, I, 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 I was frustrated. She needs to come out and say she's done it, but she ain't going to do his shit. He, what he's done, you see, he's been trying this social media game that much with that many of his fighters. He's, he's overdone it. He's overkilled it with her, hasn't he now? And people have like, looks like they're not interested in it now. Oh. It's right. dying of death, isn't it? Because most people had uh, um, had Jonas beating her, cool. and so oh, until she goes in there and rematches Jonas and beats her, she can't move forward for me. Oh. No one's going to give a shit. You've got to write that wrong. You've got to oh. go in there, yeah. beat beat Jonas, and yeah. if you beat her and beat and beat her this time, it was the same with Katie Taylor. Until she beat Pursuit in a rematch, which to be fair, I think that she did win the rematch, but she had to go in there and write that wrong. And nobody really paid that much interest in the advances of her career until she wrote that wrong. And that's exactly the same as what's going to happen with Terry Harper. She has to go in there and rematch Jonas. Yeah, she has to do, yeah. 
she's got to do because if she don't, she'll have forever be known as a runner. And, so- and you'd probably argue now that with Jonas's performances against Harper and recently against Katie Taylor, that Jonas's stock is probably higher than Harper's at the minute. Yeah, probably. Yeah, of course it is. Yeah, and obviously she's gonna she's moving into media soon. I reckon so. She's doing well, isn't she, Jonas? But uh, who would you take out on a night out, Jonas or Terry Harper or Shannon Courtney? Uh, Jonas. <laughs> Not let your last hear that one, eh, Dale? <laughs> <laughs> It's the oh, girl members I, area. You know what else you want to talk about? Um, no, I think we've covered, I think, obviously, the main subject, Billy Joe. Where does he go from here? Quick touch what? on Fury Joshua and what the about, sham of last week's pay-per-view. What about uh, Bean? What next for Bean? To coin one of your phrases, he's on skid row, isn't he? Yeah, he's... Uh... He's he's a I'm all right, Jack in a bean though. He looks like he's gonna land on his feet with netball and darts gig, doesn't he? Well, he, he's shocking on the darts as uh, the voice of hardcore darts, Mido. You know, it's he'll, uh, he'll, he'll preach to you um on his on his darts YouTube channel. You uh Man. you're you're a bit of a darts fan. You and Smido used to go up matchroom shows for darts, didn't you, Dale? Uh, we went up to Blackpool a couple of years ago. We went to the match play up in Blackpool, yeah. And you go good night, good good night out. To be honest, yeah, good night out. Yeah, it, it, it is a good night out, and I do like the darts. Loads of people getting drunk and that. That's it. Yeah. Were you, did you stop in an hotel and that? No, no, nah, because he doesn't live too far from there. Does he? He's only half an hour down the road. So what were he on? Bitter lemon. Uh, still water, I think. Still water. Were you Steve? <laughs> Did you have a drink? No, because I, I, I drove myself, so I only had a couple. So you went to darts and you were, what, you were drinking what? what do, you want, do you want to you want a goldfish in that pint or something? You must take darts and drink water. <laughs> you know, you oh my Jesus, what are you doing to me, Dale? What are you at Voice of Hardcore pay-per-view? Well, what you'll have to do is uh, when Dennis puts a show on at Donny Dome, you'll have to tip me. <laughs> Dennis put, I'll not be going to Dennis' show unless he begs. <laughs> <laughs> Dennis bought me putting out on at Donny Dome. Bully's got an exclusive there, hasn't he? Oh, what, what are we going to get Dave Allen against Cash Allen? I think that's well, from what I've heard, Dennis is trying to match Dave Allen in America on somebody else's show, get him a big payday. That's what I'm hearing. So We'll, we'll we'll see, won't we? But they... so what happened to the four or f- I thought he was going to go four or five fights, then go for the British. Is that out the window? They're just chat nonsense, don't they? Dave Allen's brains are scrambled, aren't they? From Otis fight, it looks in it. But let's hope that he sorts himself out and get gets a belt. Let let's let him clear, like, get out of sport with a belt if he's going to do anything because. Let's have it right. Match him abused Dave Allen, didn't they? Really, and then just threw him away like garbage, didn't they? You know what I mean? Dave Allen will never get over the fact that he knocked all that money back to fight on a brick top show. He'll never get over that, you know. Never get over that. He'll never get back to that level of money. And it's like winning lottery and losing ticket, in it? When you're offered that kind of money. I'm just trying to sort of plot a route for him and... Plot a route? Yeah, job centre. <laughs> <laughs> to to hey, a belt job centre. You're 29. Get on train at Cunningsborough. Go into town. Go to the job centre. All right. Stop telling us you're a fighter when you don't train. You've never trained. Get to the job centre and go do something positive. Go work with disadvantaged kids or something. Go do something. But stop stop with the charade that you're a boxer because you don't train. You're going to get hurt. It's a disaster waiting to happen. I've been banging on about it for a long time. He more or less admitted it when he retired. And now he's coming back. Look, it's the hurt game. You know, he's a decent, he's a nice enough lad, but it's boxing. You can't play at it and laugh, be laughing and joking, strutting about bubble in a dressing gown with Bart Simpson slippers on. All that carry on. That's just, it's like a comedy element, but there's no room for sentiment in boxing. Yeah. 
I don't know. They, in my opinion, Dave Allen's the Eddie Eagle of boxing. You know, Eddie the Eagle Edwards. Fly, Eddie, fly. Well, Dave needs to turn it in, but Dennis has got the pedigree. He might be able to do something with him. He's got the contacts, but all that will be, in my opinion, if he gets to fight in America, just cashing him in. That's all it'll be. Getting a few quid out of the job. And it's a cruel sport, isn't it, really? You know, you you leave Dennis after, and you you go missing seven years, and we match him, and then you come back. It's gone full circle, hasn't he? You think? Yeah, I think so. Like a lot you say, he has just been sort of tossed out as, as garbage as well, hasn't he? Um, any update on Mickey Theo, John Fury? Uh, there's a guy. There's a video coming out next week. I've just filmed it the other day. A guy's there's a guy coming involved who's going to be a mediator. He's going to he knows other to other parties. He's going to go speak to him with somebody, and we're going to see because there's a lot of time and effort gone into it, and there's a lot gone on behind the scenes to get this fight on. And it just needs Big John to sign. But he looks like Big John's assholes fell out, doesn't it? So I don't know, but John, Big John needs to come out and say something, doesn't he? Because he's said a lot, hasn't he? And then. He's gone missing, so I don't know, but I think it'll happen. But I think it'll only happen when Big John's 15 minutes are up and uh, he feels like he needs to get his sent back in public eye. But I notice a lot of people giving John Fury stick on his Instagram, so don't give him any stick, just Instagram him and message him and say, When you're fighting Mick, so that's not, it's not rocket science, is it? But I'm disappointed with Coogan taking them Mickey Theo videos off his channel. He took them we're, down. Um, he took them down. We're uh, we're all looking forward to the fight anyway because it's got to happen, hasn't it? It's got to happen. It's got to happen, and Mick's in shape, and he wants it. And does John want it? John's a favourite, obviously, because he's boxed. But we all saw John Fury in uh, box on my channel, didn't we? If you could call it that, yeah. yeah. A bit of a journeyman, weren't he, if anything? No shame in that course. Well, he's not got a stoppage, has he? He's got one guy retired on his stool, so if you call that a stoppage, fair enough. But I think he'd, he would injure his arm or something. But he's, he, well, basically, statistics suggest that John Fury is a feather duster man, don't they? Well, of course they do, yeah. <laughs> yeah. One stoppage tells you that, doesn't it? 7% KO ratio, right? And Paulie Malignaggi is 15%, so do the maths. He's poorly a feather duster man. He is, isn't he? We agree that. He was, yeah, he was known as that, weren't he? Yeah. He's Campbell he two, was he a two-weight world champion? Yeah. Paul Malignaggi? He's Campbell Atten, a feather duster man. Well, he ain't got his man strength as he yet, so mm. you'd, have to, you'd, have, you'd have to give him time on that one. Um, but of course, that, he... he what did you think about Campbell Atten's opponent the other day jumping up uh, all them weight divisions? Personally, I haven't got a problem with someone like Campbell Hatton um, being signed by Matchroom, being built up by Matchroom, but he shouldn't be in the in the in the slots that he is. Twice he's fought, twice they've been on pay per views, and they've been towards the top of the card. I understand they're trying to raise his profile, but. Do that when he's got a credible record under his belt and he's got experience so that he can go into proper fights in those slots. There's plenty of other deserving fighters who should be fighting further up the card. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what about Femi? Is he going to stay at Sky with his stable and, and Dillian White? Um, I, To be honest, I don't know. I know, I know that Sky have got exclusivity on on Joshua and, and White, I think. Um, he will stay with Sky because, to be honest, the Sky box office platform is where the most money is going to be um, in the UK market. There's no doubt about that. So Joshua will want to stay there. Um, it's, it, I, th I can see a bit of a scramble coming up for um, promotional rights for Sky. One thing to sort of have a, have a look into as well is the fact that BT Sports actually up for sale as well at the moment and Amazon are the leading contenders to buy them. So who they're obviously selling that arm of their uh, product, BT. So BT Sport could be no longer in the coming months. Oh. So what, where does that leave Bricktop? 
Yeah, Big Top might end up down at Job Centre with Dave Allen. Unless we see the, the, the re-rise of uh, Box Nation. Because Frank dig that up now, he'd look, he'd look, he'd be in a rake pickle if he dug that up, wouldn't he? Right, it's been great to be back. You what on channel, yeah? You happy, Dale, yeah? You feel, you feel like you're liberated now, you've said your bit. That's it, yeah. Are you happy Saunders got beat, Dale? Yes or no? Yes. Yeah, well, at least you're honest, aren't you? At least you're honest. Okie dokie then. Well, listen, you take care, Dale. Have a great day, you and your little honey. <laughs> she's going to cook you some dinner. Yeah, she's uh, she's just nipped out to, I think, do a bit of shopping and that this morning. So well, you uh, have she'll be coming back torches. sticking on. I've, I've put the request in for, um, I, want a, um, I want a roast beef. I, I, I want a beef dinner, I do. Bit of intense beef with Dale's tonight, is it? Uh, this afternoon, exactly is it? that, yeah. Exactly that. Intense beef. Intense beef. <laughs> Better than laughing lunch of me, I'll be giving. Okay, then. Well, listen, you take care. And you want to give a big shout out to your Twitter handle, Dale? Yep. Yeah, and uh, and to my very own football podcast as well. Go on, yeah. Centre Circle Podcast. Give us a follow. Go on, Dale. With sent, with pop. What team are you, Dale? Wolves? Of course, on Wolves, yeah. And it's headed up by me and three of my mates. We've got a Wolves fan, a West Brom fan, an Aston Villa fan. And obviously, I'm a Wolves fan, so yeah, it covers the four main teams in the West Midlands. Um, Ooh, and yeah, we do we... all them. Well, um, oh, at the league that I mean, Villa are above us in the league at the moment, but I think we've suffered with a lot of injuries and in that this season. I think once we get a fully fit squad back next season, we'll definitely sort of be the king of the West Midlands again, no doubt about that. But well, yeah, we, we, we do an hour, we do an hour once a week. Recapping all the football for the week and uh, looking ahead to the week. We have a bit of a laugh, a bit of banter on there. Well, Villa nearly won league with Big Ron, didn't they, years ago, back in the day, when they had Steve yeah. Saunders and Daly and Atkinson up front. Do you remember? That were a good partnership, wasn't it? Yeah, I think they come second in the league, didn't they? Yeah. Very, very, very early 90s, I think, were not it? Yeah, I think 93 something. Year, wasn't it? The first year, 92, 93. That's first it, yeah. So, good luck to Villa. Uh, you don't like Villa, though, do you? Birmingham, nah. Birmingham are doing well, aren't they? Tougher wide ground than is, you know, Birmingham. Oh, St Andrews. Yeah. Wouldn't look. Have you been there been, a few times? I went there, oh God, it must have been around about seven or eight years ago now. We had a, we had an FA Cup tie there, we did, and it was midweek. And, uh, oh God, I've never been in such a hostile atmosphere. I really <laughs> am. <laughs> Were people throwing cups of tea at you and all that? Well, if you want to eat a, a cup of something, yeah. It won't tea. <laughs> <laughs> it definitely won't tea. Is it that bad? Yeah, Zulus aren't they? The cold aren't they? Fans them them that them mad fans that follow them and all mm. and that. Look out for the big red Z. What? Yeah, is that what it is? Yeah, that's it. Yeah. What? What are wolves? Uh, hardcore's called. Um, Subway Army, isn't it? Subway Army. Are you one at Subway Army, Dale? Nah. No, you're just a, you just go with your season ticket, don't you, Dale? Have you got a season okay. ticket? At the moment, no, I haven't got one at the moment. Um, I had to give it up three years ago because obviously we wanted to buy the house and stuff, so try and get to as many games as I can, but at the moment, not got a season ticket. Did your last mate you give it up, Dale? She did, yeah. We... Ruled, um, overruled, I was overruled. You were overruled? We need to, <laughs> we need to cook costs else, we, need, we won't get a mortgage. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my God, I bet that was a big debate, wasn't it? Did you have a big inquest about it? I bet you were in bits, weren't you, Dale? There was, yeah. I mean, I was even willing to give up the focus. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you got your own way with car in end, though, didn't you? Yeah, I did, yeah. It's not that bad, then, is it? All right, then. Well, listen, you have a great day, my friend. Thanks for coming. And you. Thanks for having me on. Bye. Well, that was Dale Nichols, the voice of Hardcore Pay-Per-View. Always entertaining to have Dale on. He, uh, he likes a bit of banter. He's, he's a good laugh. He's actually been up to my office uh, uh, before. Uh, Factor took him out for a bite. Went to Brex in Rotherham. It's nice in there. But yeah, good bloke, Dale. Uh, good boxing man. Uh, and I think his Twitter handles, Dale, at Dale the Great. So... 
All right. So peace out.